Hello again. In this second tutorial, we will see how to simulate a mismatch condition between a transmission line and the load. Our transmission line will be a micro strip transmission line, which consists of a strip line, ground, and in between them there will be a substrate semiconductor material. You can design your transmission line using the simulation module. Our transmission line characteristic impedance will be 75 ohm, and the width of the strip will be 1.45 millimeter. The height of the substrate will be 1.6 millimeter, and the Epsilon R will be 4.3. We can start our simulation as for the coaxial cable by creating a new project and setting the environment of the simulation. It will our simulation frequency range will be from 0 to 2 GHz and we can monitor the electric and magnetic field at 1 GHz. We'll start by constructing the substrate We will set dimension using variables, which make things much easier for us if we want to modify later the dimensions. The height of the substrate, we will give it a variable named edge height of substrate. We will use the FR4 material. You will name it as a substrate. It will be a square substrate with dimension of 70 millimeter. The high will be 1.6 millimeter. Now we can see the substrate here. The second step is to create the ground, and it will be at the bottom of the substrate. We will select the surface, and we will do as what we have done with the coaxial extruding the ground. We'll name it as a ground, and the material we will use the perfect electric conductor here. Now the third thing, and th the final thing, is to construct the strip line, and we will use the same shape: the brick and the the, the width of the of it. It will be minus Ws over two, Ws over two. The length it will be the same as the length of the substrate. Yeah, this should be positive. The height, it will start. It, it will be placed on the top of the substrate. So the start point actually, it will be the the, the surface of the substrate, which is HS, mm -hmm. and the height of the perfect electric conductor. It will be same as the height of the ground. The ground. So it will be the, the where it starts plus the height of the perfect electric conductor. The material will be electric conductor here we'll name it as a strip line so here uh, what will be the width of the strip line we can get it from here it is 1.45 1.45 millimeter now we can see a very thin strip line which is quite different from what from what we have done in the lab this is because we are having a micro strip line with a different characteristic impedance than what we have done. This is 75 ohm. The one we have done in the lab is 50 ohm. Now, we need to create the waveguide board, which will be the source of our signal and the one who is going to measure the restrictions from the load. So it is quite different from the coaxial cable, where we need to, to, mi to, to calculate the dimensions of the waveguide. To make things more easier, we can go to the macros, solver, ports, calculate or extension, and you just click on calculate and construct. Then we have to close it. Now we can see how our design looks like. Now th the last step is to add the lumped element, the load. The lumped element, you have to select two points from the strip line and the ground, then you create your lumped element. So we will select two bonds, one bond at the micro at the strip line and another bond at the ground. So we will select 
the line we can select the strip line here to make it easier to select the strip line then we can go to the ground and we select the line of the ground now so now i have two points i can go to the lambda elements and just place the lambda elements our load will have 100 ohm plus j 125.6 ohm the 100 ohm is the real part we can just place it as it is while the imaginary part you sh you either have to place it in terms of inductor or capacitor since we have a positive complex number so it should be an uh, inductor and if you do the calculation based on the frequency that we are simulating which is one gigahertz so it will be 20 nanohenry so press you and press ok now we are having the, the complete structure for the simulation so we just need to extend the background the, the y-axis minimum y-axis let's say we will extend it by we have to extend it by let's say two millimeters apply okay and we can run the simulation now we can increase the accuracy now the simulation is complete so you can see the s11 parameter and it's clear that here that we have a lot of reflections as the frequency increase this is because of the mismatch between the load and the transmission line so we have around 20 percent is being reflected at the low frequency and keep increases increasing as the frequency increases and it, it reached around 90 percent of reflections from the load we need to fix this one at one gigahertz if you want this transmission line to work at one gigahertz we will have around 60 percent of reflection from the load which is not efficient so to fix this problem we need to design our own matching network we will use the open stop matching network and do the design through smith chart or through the the simulation module after setting the parameter at the simulation module we will have options. a solution where the stop should be placed at 34 millimeter with a length of 49 millimeter the second solution the stop should be placed at 55 millimeter from the load and it should be with a length of 22 so the d1 and d2 tells you where to place the stop from the load so uh, you will find the first solution is not suitable for our dimension so we will have to go to the second solution the first solution is not uh, suitable because of the length of the stop which is ex which exceeds the dimensions of the substrate so we will go with the second solution where the length will be uh, quite shorter we need to place the stop somewhere on the transmission line and the distance is measured from the load when you say 55 millimeter the location d2 that means it's 55 millimeter from the load so let's create a new prick and this prick we will name it as a stop sorry here stop the x-axis and the y-axis each axis will control different parameter of the stop the y-axis will control the location and the width of the stop the x-axis will only control the length of the stop as what we see here the y-axis and the x-axis we know that the load is placed at minus 35 so to have the length of 55 millimeter the stop should be centered at 20.5 millimeter and it should be centered at 20.5 what will be the width of the stop we will have the width of the stop which is almost equal to the width of the strip line or larger than the strip line we will make it larger than the strip line a little bit larger than the strip line what will be the length of the stop? The stop will start from from the border of the of the microstrip. So, let's say it will be at this is the start point. So this this will be the start point. The start point of our stop, and the end it will be. The minimum will be the start point, and the length, the maximum will will be actually the length of the stop. So let's add to it the length of the stop. So 22.47. It will be the same, the same as what we have done with the strip line. So let's uh, preview it. So this is how the stub will look like. We will just have it now. This is a stub we can actually merge between the strip and the stop and we can use the boolean merge here so now we will have like one structure for that line and the stop 
we can start the simulation. After the simulation is complete, we can check the S1 parameter and it's clear we have a, a kind of matching condition between the load and the transmission line at a certain frequency, which is very close to one gigahertz. You can improve this one gigahertz matching to, to have it at one gigahertz exactly by moving the stop either right or left 